Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today I am freaking jazzed because we are doing a 2024 Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. I've never done this trim level, but I have done the Sequoia tour. So for this tour, we're gonna take this as a much more rapid fire, things I like, things I don't like, and then quickly mention the upgrades for this TRD trim. But if you wanna see like three car seats, a stroller, the works, we will link my other Sequoia tours in the description box below. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and families. I'm a mom of three and I'm a certified child passenger safety tech. And like I said, we are going to break down this Toyota Sequoia. I'm gonna tell you the highs and the lows for how this car will function for a family. And let me be clear, some of you guys aren't gonna like my opinion because you're obsessed with this car and it's your ride or die and you're gonna tell me it would survive a zombie apocalypse and go 200,000 plus miles. And that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is for the moms who are considering this for the carpool lane, does it actually work? <laughs> Okay, let's start with the things I like, and that is the exterior. Now, Toyota, now when Toyota redesigned the Sequoia after years of the same body style, they brought back this fresh, cute, boxy looking thing and it did not disappoint. So I'm obsessed with the, with the exterior of the Sequoia. And I think this TRD trim also offers a lot of nice off-roading features just to really play into that very like rugged kind of look. I love the color of this car. I think Toyota does muted bright colors so well between this orange, their green, their blue. They just do a very good job of bringing fun colors in a very wearable kind of way. I'm obsessed. So I told you I love the exterior. I think this TRD Pro, again, is no exception. I'm loving these 18 inch aluminum wheels. This is just giving rugged off-road and it's also giving a ton of functionality. So I know I said earlier, I'm gonna do this tour for like the carpool moms and I still am, but if you want a car that can do it all, if you're looking for the dad car, if you like wanna go crawl rocks after daycare drop off, this is gonna help. So the Sequoia got a very nice exterior upgrade like I already showed you. They also did a lot for their new infotainment system. It's big, it's finally like a very responsive touchscreen, and it's a huge upgrade to a previously very outdated interior infotainment system. I also have a full digital dash in this car, which is also exciting. I do feel like this TRD trim level is missing a few features that I would expect for a price range of $82,000. Yeah, did I mention that yet? This car is $82,000 and it can't give me heads up display. This car is $82,000 and I can't fit four car seats. Like just so those are the kind of things where if you're gonna have that high of a price point, you're gonna be subjected to a very high set of standards. And while I know this car does a few things very well, it's just not as versatile as I think what it should be and maybe what Toyota wanted it to be. It's just, it's not, it's not the car that can do it all, in my opinion. Very simple infotainment system, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. Very easy to use and operate. Wireless charger. Really nice, good cup holders right here. And then a very interesting center console. It's very choppy. It's got a lot going on here. We do have some good charging capabilities. I mean, just like a lot of little places to do a lot of little things. We have cup holders in the back too, which I really like. The pano sunroof is nice. Uh, the rear view camera, I love. Love a rear view camera. Extra storage up here. So for the most part, I think it has some good storage up here from a mother's perspective, but we'll get back to the second, the third of the trunk space and really see how this thing would function for families. Um, as far as the drive's concerned, the TRD trim specifically, a lot of road noise. We drove this thing on the highway and she was loud. So if you're interested in a car like this, obviously make sure you do a really thorough test drive. You get it on the highway, you go over 60 miles an hour because she was, a little noisy. Okay, we are gonna start breaking down the car seat setup. So the Toyota Sequoia does come in a bench and captain's chairs. The bench, you guys, I've never been able to get my hands on one. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a rumor, I've never seen one. If you have one, I would love to see a picture of it. Um, but I have the captain's chairs today, so let's talk about how this thing would function. I brought a different car seat with me just to kind of mix it up, because like I said, I have a full tour of a ton of other car seats. Uh, and this is the Evenflow Revolve. I wanted to choose this because it actually has a very steep recline, so I just wanted to show that even though this car is freaking huge, look at how little my car seat clearance is with that uh, passenger seat set for myself at about six feet tall. Now, it absolutely works, of course, but just something to consider, if you're a very tall driver with very big rear-facing car seats, this car should have more clearance for its size. The Expedition does, the Yukon does, the Tahoe does. This is a little bit of a miss for me. And what I hate is the second row seats are not on tracks, right? So I can't move it, for, I can't move it more back to get the third or less leg room. I am stuck in this distance. And really, if I needed more clearance, I'd have to move up this seat, which I just don't like not having that flexibility to move the seat back a couple of inches. Um, but I do love a revolving car seat. If you've ever played with one, they are pretty freaking cool because they completely revolve. They can actually go all the way 
to forward facing or rear facing. You install it one time, so that's pretty fun. But I like it for this car specifically because if you're gonna have maybe two rear facing kids or you wanna enter on this side and maybe your child doesn't wanna climb underneath it, if you have someone going to the third row, it's very easy to move out of the way for good third row access. Okay, here I am in the second row of the Sequoia and let's talk about some of my amenities. We already spoke about that great sunroof that comes all the way back. I have ceiling vents, which is a huge pro. So good job, Toyota. And we also have the built-in sunshades, so that feels really good. I feel like for this price tag, I should have heated rear seats. And I don't. And I don't. And I just think that that's something that, that could have been added. I do have my climate control down there. So I like that I have two types of vents. That's always really good for ventilation. And then I have a USB and a USB-C as well. I don't think we mentioned the, um, the seats, but look at how big these captain's chairs are. I mean, I feel like a small girl on these, <laughs> on these captain seats. Like they're wide here, they're wide on the bench. So the lower anchors are very nicely exposed. You know, the buckle's a little recessed. I would prefer that to be a little bit more flexible just for our kids in booster seats. But for the most part, I mean, this is about as car seat friendly as it gets. It's nice and wide. I also think the camo print is kind of fun. Let me show you the third row access because it's not great. It's the, it, it utilizes what I like to call the fold and flip. Um, so I guess I shouldn't say it's not great. It just obviously prevents those th that seat from being on tracks, but it does make for very nice third row access because the seat is obviously completely moved out of the way. Okay, then I get to the third row. And if you can see, the floorboards are very elevated, which is why I have very much a knees to my chest kind of sensation. And it makes it a little bit uncomfortable to ride back here as an adult for long periods of time because I have no like leg support, right? Like I'm, I'm like this, like I have nothing. I told you that the second row wasn't on tracks, and strangely enough, the third row is on tracks. So if you have somebody in the second, so if you have like somebody sitting in the third row, instead of moving the second row up for more legroom, you would instead move the third row back for more legroom. But what does that do? Eats into your trunk space. And I'm just like, if I had someone using the third row, I think you could make the assumption that I would also probably need the trunk space. Like I've got three people riding in this car, why would you eat into my trunk space? Which is why it's so crazy. These seats aren't on tracks. Anyway, as far as my amenities are concerned, I do have my own little built-in sunshades, which is cute, and I also have my ceiling vents. We do have three seats found back here, and I will say the middle seat itself is actually a pretty decent size, so I feel good about the width of the seats. I feel good about the depth of the seats from a car seat standpoint. However, however, the Toyota Sequoia is really lacking in car seat hardware. As you can see, we have no lower anchors in this third row bench, and we only have one tether anchor and that tether anchor is in this seat. So if you wanted to install a car seat in the third row of the Sequoia, I'm gonna make it really easy on you. It has to be here, forward facing, has to be here. So what that means is, you know, people see crap out the back because you're gonna have a giant car seat right here and it's gonna be difficult and you can only fit three. So truly you can fit three car seats in this vehicle. In a seven passenger car, you can fit three car seats. And I just think that's not competitive enough with the other full-size family cars. Ford Expedition, tether anchors in all six seating positions. Well, I don't know what I'm missing there. I really don't. It's, I think it's honestly very frustrating. Okay, and now let's pop into the trunk. Now the trunk, I don't need to tell you because every, every, not all car viewers are going to show you like the, where it falls flat with the lower anchors and tether anchor situation. Everyone's going to talk about the trunk because it's like the most, it's almost like they did it just to get engagement. You know what I mean? They're like a problematic influencer who like knew would be pissed about this. Okay. So here's the trunk space with that third row pushed all the way back, AKA with any sort of legroom. This is no trunk space. If you want to get more trunk space, you move this forward and it's still not winning awards as far as trunk space is concerned. So they've compensated with the shelving system, which I actually don't hate. I think this is a very fun feature to include with decent sized trunk space, not as a standalone, because then you could have like some items here, some items up here, and it kind of doubles, doubles the trunk space a little bit. So I do kind of like that. Let's put this back down though, because another really big thing people are not happy with is the fact that these seats, you guys, don't lay flat. This is tricky. Um, not only does this make it more difficult for things like strollers, it's... If you had a dog back here, it looks uncomfortable. I just, I don't know. I find this very, very frustrating and quite honestly a poor design. It's just, it feels like to have such a big car, to be a hauler, to be a family hauler, you can't, you can bring your family, you can't bring any other stuff. And you can only bring three kids. So hope, 
hope you don't have any more. Three kids in car seats, I should say. I'm not trying to be a hater. I know this car is cool, but there's so many tours that focus on why this car is cool, and I don't want families to get in bad decisions and spend $80,000 on a car that they think is gonna fit their family, when in reality, it's just not. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this special edition of a Toyota Sequoia. Like I said, if you wanted to know more thoughts, how it would function, I drove a Sequoia with my three children for an entire week, and I have a YouTube video all about how it functioned for me. I hope you take away from this video the data and the facts and not like me being biased or anything. I think it's a good car. I think it's a cute car. If I didn't have three kids to worry about and I had 80 grand to spend, sure, I might drive it. I like it, but it does fall flat in a few ways. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in my next video.